Hey guys, it's Kurt. Um, so there's a little bit of interest in that post I put on the uh, forum yesterday or the other day about uh, an electrical pass through my trailer. So I figured I would uh, make a video in case anyone's interested in seeing how I approach the project. And it might give some other people some ideas if they're looking at doing the same thing. Obviously there are several ways to skin a cat. This is just the method in which I chose to skin mine. And uh, yeah, so that's about it. So I'll, I'll put together different video segments as I go along on the project and uh, hopefully it'll turn out why, uh, uh, good enough anyway. So here we go. So the first thing I did was decide to go with this uh, some Marinko onboard charger inlets. 15 amps. I would have liked 20 but I didn't want the uh, horizontal post because I want to be able to utilize any extension cords. So basically it's a 15 amp pass through uh, flanged inlet. So it's got the male plug recessed in there. That's going to be exposed on the outside of the trailer. Um, it's got some threads here in case I want to tighten it up with this uh, metal ring from the inside, which I won't do. And then it's got the connection ports here that are clearly marked. And then it's got a cap that goes over the end with uh, however a person decides to wire it up. So what I'm going to do, I've got uh, an inch and three quarter hole saw. It calls for inch and seven eighths so that these threads here can clear it. But when the cap is on, the diameter of this cap is about an inch and three quarter. So I'm going to drill out to an inch and three quarter. And since the, uh, the sheeting of the, the trailer wall is so thin, I'll use a Dremel to just open it up slightly if I need to, to let these threads pass through the, the side of the trailer wall, the cargo trailer wall. And then that should allow for a real nice tight fit inside on the plywood wall of this inch and three quarter diameter. It's kind of like a flexible rubber cap that, you know, I'll put the, uh, my, my power cord through and through the hole here and then it just slides on over the end of this like so nice clean and given the the thickness of the wall probably have i don't know from my thumb fingernail on sticking out inside of the trailer so it should be relatively low profile and relatively clean looking um i decided to go i was in menards getting supplies and i saw this i was just going to go with like a a 12 gauge six foot extension cord with a three-way outlet on the end but then i saw this uh they call a workshop GFCI block and I thought that would be a really great safety backup because then with my tank heaters plugged in if there's any short in the middle of the night against the tank or the, the, the cords or anything like that it will trip this and as well it's a 15 amp box so if for any reason it draws more than 15 amps it'll it'll trip the breaker as well so I thought this would be a really cool safety feature to have given the fact that we're trying to heat up metal around a highly explosive uh, compressed gas that's in liquid form. So what I'm gonna do, it's a six foot cord, and I'm gonna snip the end off here, and then I will hardwire that into the backside of this inlet. Again, um, well, it's hard to work with both of my hands on the camera here. But again, as you can see, very clearly marked holes with the ground and the hot and the neutral with uh, tightening screws. On the end so I'm thinking it'll work slick so the other question or the other concern I had was all right right behind the trailer wall in terms of, of rigidity and stability for when this is mounted you know if you can imagine the, the thin 30 thousandths trailer wall right behind this you know however I mount it there's still gonna be some flexibility as you plug extension cords in and out and and move it it's, it's, it's not gonna be real rigid so I thought how can I make it rigid um, by the way weatherproof proof cap on this too so when you're going down the road, nice clean, it's a tight fit. It should be a good seal. We'll see how that works, obviously. So what I thought was in between the, the back of the flange inside of the trailer wall, in between that point and the back inside plywood wall internal to the trailer, there's an air gap there, of course, which is about the thickness of the vertical metal uh, wall studs. What I'm going to do, and this may be goofy, but you can see on the outside here are three mounting holes on the outside of the flange. Um, we're kind of behind that metal ring off to take that off. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut. I picked up some solid hickory wood, one inch by two inch by four feet. Not that the four feet matters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this hickory wood to the length of the gap between the back inside of the plywood on the inside wall and the back inside of the trailer sheet metal wall. And I'm going to cut it so that it's at the thickness that will allow a, a, a rigid 
mount. And then I'm going to go in the front hole here. I'll probably drill a real small pilot hole and mount uh, the three screws on the outside flange here on the outside of the trailer in through the holes and into the hardwood. And then I'll go around on the inside of the trailer and drill small pilot holes through my, my plywood wall and then drill some similar uh, screws from the inside and that should provide a nice solid backstop and, and three pieces of wood at each mounting hole here so that this will be nice and solid to the trailer wall. I don't know if that makes sense. I hope it makes sense. But I'll post some videos as I go along or, or, or I'll, I'll take some more video and string it all together so some, some, some of you guys can maybe get some ideas or maybe come up with a better idea because this isn't necessarily the best idea. But it's small. Seems like it'll be clean with uh, minimal sized hole cutting in the side of my trailer. Um, so yeah, that's it. We'll see how the project goes and I'll string this together and post it online when I am done. So enjoy. Okay, so I started by figuring out where I want it to come through on the inside. I drilled a small pilot hole from the inside all the way to the outside so I've got a, a, a place to start on the outside. So I've got a nice uh, uh, parallel plane hole coming from the outside all the way through the inside. So. Too late to turn back okay, now. Okay, so here's the hole in the side of the trailer all the way through into the inside, as you can see. Um, <clears throat> worked out pretty well. Um, we might as well just get the elephant in the room out of the way right now. So yeah, those are uh, uh, Dremel tool marks on the side of the trailer, but I don't really want to talk about that anymore. Um, so we'll just move on. Nothing that'll touch up paint won't uh, fix down the line. So uh, basically, I, I drilled out that one and three quarter inch hole and I don't know if I ground out the aluminum or just kind of pushed it <laughs> bigger, but I did finally get it opened up enough to accept the the inlet. And then I took uh, the 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 inside hole there in the in the plywood on the inside was just a little tight for the the back of this. So I took some, a sanding uh, attachment for my Dremel tool and just kind of smoothed that out and made it big enough. So it, I'm pr pretty pleased with the fit. It's a nice uh, nice tight fit there on the outside of the trailer, real snug. And then uh, <coughs> on the inside, you can see it's it's pretty good as well. There's a little bit of a gap here on the left side. Not too bad though. I'll, I'll probably in the end go around with some caulking on this anyway, or maybe I won't. It doesn't really matter if it's caulked or not. So just uh, slightly out around on that side, but all in all, not too bad. It is a trailer after all. All right, so uh, on to the next step. And what my plan is for that, I take my uh, caliper tool and measure the depth from the back side of the plywood wall on the inside. So basically from, from this face to the back side of the wall here on the, the trailer, that face. Because as you can as you can see, if, if it, this got a lot of flex to it if I don't attach it. Anything, plus three little screws in these holes aren't really going to do much. So I'm going to cut that hickory wood to dimensions that equal that depth. And then I'm going to screw in from the inside into that hickory and then go through these three mounting holes here on the flange through the the edge of the trailer wall here and into the other side of the hickory and that should give a nice solid stable support base for the inlet hey one I'll other thing that. before i forget the instructions say to mount this with the ground plug up and i think that's primarily because there's a drain hole in the bottom of this uh, this is designed for a marine application um I don't necessarily know as if I'm going to do that because that drain hole, quite honestly, when it's mounted is going to be inside the trailer and I might actually mount it up or plug it because quite honestly, if I get water in there, I don't want it going inside my trailer. Um, I guess ultimately I'd rather have it corrode this plug and me spend another 25 bucks and buy another plug rather than get a bunch of water inside if it does leak past the, the, the rubber cover here. So uh, obviously in the end, when I'm done mounting, I'm going to caulk around the outside of that so just be aware of that the instructions do say to mount it so that that drain hole is facing down not sure you want to do that so your call if you decide to use okay this so top. i got the hickory blocks cut um and i have three of those in there i have uh screws wood screws um on the inside going partially the way into the block you can see i drilled uh, the three pilot holes already through the sheet metal for the mounting holes on the inlet. And uh, I will say that, that that hickory, I was trying to look for really dense hardwood. Hickory ranks up there is relatively hard, but um, I did drill pilot holes for the screws on the inside, and I would recommend that. Don't get too big, of course, but um, 
you know it's not going to expand quite as much as a softwood like pine but probably do want some degree of a pilot hole i did have my wife come out and while i was while i it's a pretty tight fit of these blocks in here but i had her put pressure against um the outside of the wall here while i went inside and drilled and then partially started the screws i don't have the screws tight because the more i tighten it the block of wood spins in there so i just have them i have them aligned so that i can start these pilot holes and drill those screws in and then once i get the uh um inlet in you know if the blocks turn it they'll they'll actually stop against the outer casing of the inlet and everything should tighten up nice so so far i'm pleased with it um yeah aside for a little cosmetic damage there in the trailer that again i don't want to talk about and uh, a little uh, Dremel damage here to my finger. Uh, we're doing good so far. So I'll be back with an update right, in a so little bit. So I stripped back the uh, main sheath. I cut the end plug off of the end of that uh, uh, GFCI block and then uh, uh, trimmed off the ends, stripped back the main plastic, or I'm sorry, the main uh, black uh, sheath there. One and an eighth inch is, one and an eighth inches per instructions, and then uh, trim back each individual lead wire I think it was nine sixteenths of an inch uh, don't forget before you do this obviously cord's got to come through the hole from the inside and if you use this particular part it's got to go through this rubber cap you'll have to you know I know that seems like captain obvious stuff but trust me if anyone's like me I've done things in my life where it's like oh that was dumb uh, I forgot some simple steps and I got to take things apart to do it again so anyway so we're through the cap we got things stripped next step is to uh going to the nicely color coded holes green wire in the green with the green nut black wire in the black with the black nut and the white wire in the it's not really white it's just clear with the silver nut and then uh, our silver screw I keep calling those screws nuts uh, we'll tighten it down we'll put the cap on we'll slide it through I pre-drilled holes into the uh, hickory block up there and we'll tighten things down see how it turns out okay so I'm pretty much finished with uh most of the installation nice solid here the three screws went in uh, nicely with just a screwdriver with the pre-drilled holes um, I can tell the way it kind of squished the this uh, I guess back washer of the flap here the rubber washer that um, it's uh, it's nice and tight and the cap fits nice and secure I probably don't even need any caulking but anyone that knows me knows I like to uh, Sometimes over engineer things a little bit, so I'll probably put some caulking. It's just too bad I don't know how to run a Dremel tool. Um, inside, a little bright there. Um, that worked out well as too. Uh, well as well too with the uh, screws here. I did have to use my my torque driver, my cordless Dewalt torque driver, to uh, get them in. I think it's inch and a quarter screws. The screwdriver just wasn't doing it, so I got the. Uh, the high torque uh, driver and that went in nicely it's nice and flush as you can see I didn't quite get it perfectly right around the edge there so in my perfectionist tone I might just put some caulking in there just for the aesthetics but not necessary of course and that's really it um, I'll uh, you know with the with the with the e-track here I've got some of these J hooks so I can wrap the cord up around the the uh, GFCI box here and just kind of hang that on a J hook when I'm not using it. It'll fit nice out of the way here in the back. Um, so I'm relatively happy with it at this point. Um, uh, I hope you guys uh, got something out of this. Um, you know, like I said, I don't, I'm not, I'm not the kind of person that normally uh, puts these videos, but many times I use YouTube and other means to, to uh, find pro on how to do projects and they're really helpful to me so I thought I'd do my part and maybe put something online here for those of you that might be looking to do a similar project so take it or leave it uh, you can leave any comments if you want maybe things you do better different or uh, uh, anything else so that's it hope I see some of you down the road somewhere have a great week